As tensions flare in the Middle East, Lebanon teeters on the brink of becoming another Gaza, an unsettling prospect that many fear may soon become reality. Like Gaza, Lebanon harbors a vast network of underground cities, primarily in the southern region, which Hezbollah has constructed over decades, mimicking the tunnel systems used by Hamas. These tunnels are central to the military equation in the region, offering Hezbollah a strategic advantage to counterbalance Israel's firepower. With ongoing Israeli assaults on these tunnels, some wonder, is Lebanon destined to mirror Gaza's fate? The underground tunnels in southern Lebanon are no ordinary structures. These are vast, interconnected systems, described by some as cities beneath the surface, designed to house Hezbollah's military operations. Built with the help of Iran and North Korea, these tunnels serve as command centers, weapons depots, missile storage facilities, and hideouts for top Hezbollah leaders. Some are even large enough for trucks to navigate through, underscoring their complexity and scope. This underground infrastructure allows Hezbollah to store its missiles, many of which are supplied by Iran, safe from Israeli airstrikes. Unlike Israel, which has the Iron Dome to shield it from missile attacks, Hezbollah does not have an equivalent defense system. Storing missiles above ground would expose them to Israeli attacks, so Hezbollah's solution has been to bury them deep underground. These tunnels are not just simple passageways, but sprawling, multi-level complexes with living quarters, command centers, and supply depots. The fighters can rest, plan, and evade Israeli detection, making it extremely challenging for Israel to root out Hezbollah's operations. The Israeli Defense Forces, IDF, have launched numerous operations targeting Hezbollah's tunnel networks. Recently, Israeli forces destroyed several tunnel shafts that were used by Hezbollah operatives to approach the Israeli border. The IDF also claimed to have killed dozens of Hezbollah militants during these operations, including ground invasions. One such tunnel, which the IDF demolished, stretched 20 meters long and crossed about 10 meters into Israeli territory near the village of Marwahin in southern Lebanon. While this tunnel did not exit in Israel, its close proximity to the border underscores the constant threat posed by Hezbollah's underground activities. Another tunnel, discovered by Israeli special forces, was equipped with a command center, weapons, and living quarters, including showers, a kitchen, and even a small relaxation area. This tunnel was just 300 meters from the border and served as part of Hezbollah's broader strategy to infiltrate Israeli territory. During a raid in the village of Aita Ash-Shab, the IDF uncovered an extensive tunnel system 80 feet deep, filled with rocket launchers and ammunition stores. This discovery aligns with warnings from Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, who told the United Nations in September that Hezbollah had been secretly digging tunnels along Israel's northern border to infiltrate Israeli communities and launch rockets. Hezbollah's tunnels in Lebanon bear a striking resemblance to the tunnels used by Hamas in Gaza. In 2021, the Alma Research and Education Center estimated that Hezbollah's tunnel network spans hundreds of kilometers, much more extensive than Gaza's Hamas metro. Like Hamas, Hezbollah has constructed underground command and control rooms, weapons depots, and missile firing positions, providing a tactical advantage in any potential conflict with Israel. However, the tunnels in southern Lebanon are on a different scale. Alma's assessment suggests that Hezbollah's network is significantly larger than that of Hamas, and this difference may be due to Hezbollah's financial and logistical support from Iran. Hezbollah's tunnels are built to allow for the movement of large groups of fighters, weapons, and even vehicles, ensuring that the group can sustain its operations even during intense Israeli bombardment. What makes Hezbollah's tunnel network even more alarming is the involvement of North Korea. According to experts, North Korean engineers helped Hezbollah construct these massive tunnels, mirroring North Korea's own plans for potential underground invasions of South Korea. Iranian companies, some linked to the Iranian Revolutionary Guard Corps, IRGC, also contributed to the construction of these tunnels, further entrenching Iran's influence in the region. While Israel focuses on dismantling Hezbollah's underground infrastructure, the group continues to launch rockets into Israel. On October 7th and 8th, Hezbollah increased its rocket fire, launching 190 projectiles on the first day and medium-range rockets at Haifa on the second. Since late September, Hezbollah has fired over 12,400 projectiles into Israel, intensifying the conflict. Israel's response has been swift and brutal. The IDF has carried out relentless airstrikes on Hezbollah positions, killing hundreds of fighters. According to Israeli military assessments, around 450 Hezbollah operatives have been killed in recent weeks as a result of the airstrikes and ground operations. 
The conflict between Israel and Hezbollah is not occurring in a vacuum. Arab states, particularly those aligned with the United States, are watching the situation with growing concern. Countries like Saudi Arabia, which hosts U.S. military bases, are quietly engaging in diplomacy to prevent the conflict from spilling over into a wider regional war. The involvement of Iran, which has long been a patron of Hezbollah, only heightens these fears. Meanwhile, the United States has urged restraint, pressuring Israel to avoid actions that could further escalate tensions. However, Israeli Prime Minister Netanyahu remains steadfast in his military strategy, determined to neutralize Hezbollah's threat to Israel's northern border. As Israel continues its offensive against Hezbollah's tunnel networks, the question remains, can Lebanon avoid Gaza's fate, or is it already too late? Whether Lebanon will follow Gaza's path remains to be seen, but the groundwork has certainly been laid.